evening. I'm Sarah Fay, and I'm an advisory editor at the Paris Review, and I'll be your host tonight for Live from Prairie Lights. Two years ago, about this time, seven poets gathered around a long table in Shambaugh House for four days at the same time every day and set out to write poems together. The results of this endeavor are published in Seven Poets' Four Days, One Book. So while we may refer to the poems they wrote as mere exercises, the fact that they merited publication tells you a little something about what was really going on in that room. It doesn't hurt that the Seven Poets included Americans Marvin Bell, Chris Merrill, and Dean Young, Hungarian Istvan László Geher, Maltin Simon Inguanes, Russian Ksenia Glubovich, and Slovenian Tomasz Salomon. That's a little like putting Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, and B.J. Armstrong on a basketball court in 1990 and calling it a little game of pickup. <laughs> These poets gathered together for myriad reasons. To emulate the French surrealists who engaged in collective enterprises such as Exquisite Corpse, in which each poet added a line to a single poem, to explore the Renga tradition, which dates from 10th century, from 8th century, excuse me, 8th century J Japan, and is a chain of poems also written by a group of poets. They gathered in the spirit of unity to, as Chris Merrill writes, demolish the walls of solitude that is so often encompasses, that so often encompass, encompasses a poet's life, to experience, as he writes, the sensation of being simultaneously oneself and the other. And they gathered to engage in a wild encounter, to check their egos at the door and see what would happen. In reading these poems, what's most readily apparent is the camaraderie, the unity these poets felt. Gone are the intense introspections and sober descriptions one expects from the solitary poet. Instead, one feels as though one has just walked in on a really good party. And perhaps that was the point, to remind us that humans, when not left alone to take ourselves too seriously, are jovial, kind, playful, and more likely to harness lightheartedness than a pistol. And with that, I'll turn it over to poet and editor Chris Merrill, uh, who, along with being the author of four collections of poetry, directs the International Writing Program, and Marvin Bell, who is the author of too many poetry collections to count, and taught at the University of Iowa as Flannery O'Connor Professor of Letters for nearly 40 years. Uh, I'll turn this over, and they, they will take questions as we go, so please, we welcome them from the audience, and I'll have a microphone for you. Please join me in welcoming Chris Merrill and Marvin Bell. Thank you, Sarah. That was really, uh, that was just terrific. And, uh, but to give you a sense of the, the playfulness at the heart of this enterprise, I thought Marvin said to me, what's your full name? And we've known each other for 20 years. And so I said, well, Christopher Merrill. And he said, no, her name. <laughs> and I thought, you know, that was at the heart of what made this uh, enterprise so much fun. We kept, we kept mishearing things over the course of the, the days. So I'm going to begin by just saying a few words about how this all all came uh, came together and what we were what we were trying to do. <clears throat> the IWP celebrated its 40th anniversary two years ago, as Sarah said, and my thought was to try to celebrate this in various ways. We had had a wonderful Irish playwright in our program some years before named Mike Finn, who had this idea that we should try to use the internet to create some sort of collaborative playwriting project. And as things developed, uh, we came up with the idea that for the 40th anniversary, we would ask 14 playwrights around the world to write in 24 hours a play that uh, two days later we would stage here in uh, Iowa City. And the way it worked was that on the Sunday before the week of celebrations began, Mike uh, sent out to these 14 playwrights around the world a definition of the word union. And over the next 24 hours, 
Every one of the playwrights wrote their play. Uh, they arrived at noon the next day. We began translating them, and two nights later, the play was produced here, um, staged here at the University of Iowa, and a week after that, it was put on in London, and then it went on to the Portland Stage Company in Portland, Maine, and it was really a, a pretty terrific uh, endeavor. Just as those uh, plays arrived at noon, I sat down with Marvin and Dean Young and Tomaj and Istvan and Simone and uh, Ksenia, and I gave them the same definition, the same seven definitions of the word union, and we thought, what we'll try to do is to write for 30 minutes, 15 lines in any meter, using the uh, definition of the word union as a prompt, as a starting point. And the only person who knew uh, everybody in that room uh, at the start of this enterprise was me. I knew everybody, and I also was the only one to know uh, what, the, uh, what was going to start the whole thing. And when I handed out the definitions, I was also the only one who didn't know what to write as soon as we started. And I thought, oh, this is a disaster. I brought together these great, these great poets, and uh, we're going to have this conversation in poetry, and uh, I have no idea where to go. Um, but then just as, as it happens, we, we were doing what Marvin uh, has taught his students to do for so many years and in so many settings. We were uh, surrendering to the materials. And uh, Sarah nicely uh, points to the lineage of the, of the project here. But uh, one important uh, part of that lineage was the wonderful book that Marvin and Bill Stafford wrote, Segways. The, the poems they wrote back and forth uh, uh, several, many, many years ago, uh, which has been absolutely crucial to my sense of the poetic enterprise. And I, you know, as we were preparing for this, I kept thinking of that uh, one poem of yours like, oh, I, I, I love so much in that book. The title is It's, I-T apostrophe S, and then it, it bleeds into the first line. It's taken me a month to reply to your, <laughs> that's, that's what this is all about. So we, were, we, we, we wrote for 30, for 30 minutes, and uh, you, know, every, you could see people scratching out and pacing the room. We had chocolate chip co cookies and coffee laid out on the table in the library of the Shamba house. And, uh, and then after 30 minutes, we, we went around the table and we read these rough drafts aloud. And Ksenia, of course, writing in Russian, Tomaj writing in Slovenian, Simone writing in Maltese, which is a language that sounds sometimes like Arabic, sometimes like French, sometimes like Italian. We heard all kinds of different languages in it. And uh, uh, Isvan writing in Hungarian. They would do spot translations. And as we were reading these poems aloud, without any prompting, I noticed everybody writing down uh, lines and phrases and words that they heard from the, uh, uh, the poems that were going around the table. And, so after we had read them all aloud, I said, well, let's, let's try it again. We wrote for 30 more minutes and uh, uh, went around the table, read the poems aloud, and took our notes with the uh, assignment to write a third poem overnight, come in the next day at noon, and do the same thing for two hours. And we did this for, for four days. Uh, at the end, we had, we had 82 poems. Dean was short, too, on this. Uh, uh, he, he, he wrote 10 instead of 12. He was the one who who called this crazy fun, and uh, and I also, this is what I love about uh, the poets, he, he wrote ten poems, but he actually, he only numbered them one through nine, so we kept thinking he had nine poems, and uh, uh, it was it was just, it was, it was we, we were making light, I think, all, all the way through, and that was, that was just a lot of fun. At the end of it, uh, Dean said, uh, he looked around the table and he said, you know, I feel a little bit like uh, uh, like uh, Kerry Wood, uh, to extend the, uh, the Chicago sports metaphor. He said, you know how the Cubs just made him pitch so much in that one season and he was done for the rest of his career? And uh, maybe we will never write again. And uh, uh, fortunately, we've all gone on to write and it's turned into this book. So that's what we were trying to do. And uh, uh, with that, maybe we'll open it up and start to read some poems. And uh, maybe I'll read a couple. Uh, I'll read you the one that, uh, you know, I mean, again, if anybody should have been able to start this thing, it would be me, but I sat there, you know, looking at my blank page and then finally wrote this. And remember the, the word, the prompt was union. Of this and that, the union of fabric and flesh, as when the bugler rose one night from a deep sleep, pulled on his fatigues, and left the regiment camped outside the walled city to wander through the desert until he came to a cave in which the scrolls had moldered and the bones of the divine shone intermittently. Tracer rounds lit a new route to the interior of the mud hut in which the pa 